Just down the road from us in Farmington Hills is the Zeckelman Holocaust Center, which for years has served as a memorial for those that were victims of, of one of the greatest atrocities in human history and a place of celebration for survivors and, uh, and, and their ability to continue with their life, tell their stories, and spread messages of kindness across our community and around the world. They recently underwent some massive renovations and improvements to their exhibit space and so much more. And joining us from the Holocaust Center is their Director of Curatorial Services, Mark Mulder. Mark, thank you for being with us today. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, glad to have you on as the Zeckerman Holocaust Center w had reopened its exhibit space after some extensive renovations, and they did it at a very, uh, in a very timely uh, point of the year uh, as we recognized recently Holocaust Remembrance Day uh, right along that weekend uh, before we recognized that day specifically is when this exhibit reopened. But first, tell us about this project because it was a huge undertaking for the HC. Absolutely. You know, we began work on this almost five years ago, um, where we engaged with uh, exhibit designers from New York, Ralph ba Applebaum and Associates, in order to give us some ideas of what renovation could look like. And then over the last, say, three years, I've been focused almost exclusively on this project. Um, we have basically tore the exhibit down to the studs. I kept a lot of the old installations that meant a lot to us institutionally that have been here since the beginning, since the 80s. But uh, I, those are in storage now. And everything that you see when you go through the new exhibit is more or less brand new. We reused artifacts. We reused some of the photographs. But we really wanted to make sure that this was an updated exhibit, that it looked modern, that it followed kind of, you know, new scholarship on how to talk about this topic. And so as you were designing this new exhibit space, as you were considering how to change things at the Zeckelman Holocaust Center uh, in, in terms of the experience uh, and, and even the, the learning opportunities, how did that all come together? What was the main focus in this new exhibit space? I think, and, and you'll see, you see it on the screen right now, you know, the survivor stories is what really pushed us. You know, we've we've known and we've noticed that, you know, our survivors are, are less and less able to come in and speak to our visitors. And 20 years ago, when the old exhibit opened, um, if you came to the center, most likely you would have walked out either having a tour from someone who survived the Holocaust or seen an, uh, a speech from them at the end of your tour. And that's just not as possible anymore. And so all Holocaust institutions are kind of reckoning with this change. How are we going to keep telling these stories in the future? And that's really something that we decided was going to be the centerpiece of our exhibit. You know, we sacrificed places where we could tell very specific and didactic factual information. And instead said, I would rather focus on a personal story from someone who lived it. And so with that being the case and, and trying to preserve these stories of survivors of the Holocaust for years to come, knowing that many of them are uh, getting up there in age and are nearing the end of their life, how does technology play into this new exhibit space and extending the lifetime of those stories from our survivors? Sure. So and and there's, you know, there's lots of other options out there in the world. The way that we focused on it is, you know, we have touch screens where you can watch short clips. We project their quotations onto the wall. We, you know, we have uh, other kind of collage videos that include survivor testimony and we have, you know, printed quotations throughout the museum. Um, other institutions are doing uh you know, interviewing where you can interview uh, holograms and things like that. Uh, we, we didn't go quite that far with ours, but there's lots of ways that people are exploring to see how we can best use that technology to keep those stories going in the future. And, and ultimately, the goal of the Zeckerman Holocaust Center remains the same as it did before this transformation of your exhibit space, but you're presenting that mission, you're presenting that story in a different way. And, and how do you believe that these renovations will help to enhance that experience and enhance the impact of seeing these stories, of hearing these stories, and learning more about the atrocities of the Holocaust? Yeah, so one of the main um, you know points of our mission is this, this word empower. And we really want to empower our visitors. And so I did a tremendous amount of research over the last, say, 10 years of my career on how to get our visitors and get visitors that come to an exhibit like this 
to really develop some compassion for what they see. And, and we use techniques very specifically, including connecting them with the people who lived those experiences and also getting them to reflect on what they can do in their lives to uh, make the world a better place. You know, we don't tell people what they need to do, but we give them the tools to understand that whatever their motivation is, they have the ability to make that positive change. And that's something that is really, really, I think, successful and has been working really well for us so far. And it's going to help to reach even more people than beyond the 150,000 visitors in person and virtually to the to your exhibit tours that you tend to have year by year to have uh, something different to attract people in something different, a different way to look at the at, at the uh, history that's in your building and the stories that are going to continue to be told for years to come. In terms of the initial reaction to this new exhibit space, what's the community's reaction been like? It's only been open for a short period of time uh, at the point that we're talking about this today. Yeah, so we've only been open to the public recently, but we have uh, allowed students to come in for a little while now. And the the reaction has been, I, I couldn't have asked for a better reaction. They're, they're saying the exact types of things I would like to see. You know, they're connecting with the survivor community that they are connecting with the stories that we're telling and even more importantly they're walking out with a sense that they are not helpless in their world you know that there's something that they can do um positively to impact their world and th those are you know those are all huge wins for us we've seen some some individuals on the screen that were at your celebratory event as you did your grand reopening of this exhibit, some of whom I would imagine ha have either had family that were survivors or were survivors themselves, as they saw this new exhibit space, this new approach to telling the stories of themselves, of their families, of uh, those that were lost in this atrocity, how did they react to this new approach to your storytelling? It's it's been a really meaningful you know thing you know experience for me to see them react you know you, what you see in these photos are groups that we haven't really seen in that size since COVID you know in all honesty and you know to have them back in the building and for them to see how we're telling their stories and have them react so positively has been really really moving and even more than that one of the design aspects of this exhibit is that I made sure that. You know, I can tell different stories over time so that we're not just committed to the same, you know, say 60 Michigan Holocaust survivors that are currently in the exhibit. I can, we have over 800 in our collection and I can keep telling different stories throughout time. Mark Mulder joins us, the Director of Curatorial Affairs at the Zeckerman Holocaust Center on today's edition of The Splash Live. You can get more information on the Holocaust Center as well as the brand new exhibit space at holocaustcenter.org. You can also find them on Facebook at Holocaust Center. Again, their website, holocaustcenter.org, for more information, including on special programs and events coming up at the Zeckerman Holocaust Center, which is located on Orchard Lake Road in Farmington Hills, just down the road from us here in the greater West Bloomfield area. Mark, uh, as people venture over to the Holocaust Center or consider going there, maybe they've learned a lot about the Holocaust over the years. Maybe they, they've been to other Holocaust centers, but, but you know, what do you hope is the reason that they come out to this? Or wh what would you say would be the, bi the biggest draw uh, at this new exhibit space that, that would give them a reason to come out here and learn even more, take a different look at this piece of history? I think that other Holocaust organizations, and we're, you know, we work really well with all the other Holocaust organizations that we know in this country, you know, this country and abroad. Um, you know, one thing that we do, we said, what can we do differently or what can we do better than anyone else? And the reality is, is that we can tell the stories of our Michigan community members. And so that's that's what I think more than anything else they should expect to see. I mean, we have artifacts, we have art, we have, you know, uh, really incredible design that will, you know, people that are interested in those things would take a lot away from. But, you know, it's that that focus on the Michigan connection. And it's not just survivors. We have artifacts from um, Michigan witnesses to war crimes trials. And, and people received, you know, communications from their family from the Warsaw Ghetto here in Metro Detroit. So it's really, you know, how can I, you know, it's about making it relevant to the visitors that come here rather than just telling a broad story. It's really about making it specific to people from this area. Mark Mulder is with us. He is the Director of Curatorial Affairs at the Zeckelman Holocaust Center. The brand new exhibit space is open after it being years in the making and began that those renovations officially uh, to, to prepare for this time back in May of 2023. Mark, before we let you go, anything else that we should know about uh, the Zeckelman Holocaust Center beyond this new exhibit or upcoming programs and events people should keep their eyes out for? I just want everybody, you know, encourage everybody to engage with our social media. Uh, we're on Instagram. 
uh, you know, we are on Facebook. And to, of course, as you mentioned, visit our website, www.holocaustcenter.org to stay in touch and keep up with us. Well, Mark, we appreciate you for joining us and, and congratulations on this massive step forward for the Zachary Holocaust Center. As you said, it was, a, it was a big undertaking and years in the making and you finally have reached that finish line with some, some very important and, and very helpful new approaches to this. So congratulations and thank you for taking the time to be with us today. Thanks for having me.